So, Pat, can you take us back 50 years ago? Tell us about Russell. Well, I lived in Kelowna. I graduated from Kelowna High School, and uh, my best friend, she decided that we needed to have a big party at her house. So we had this party and there's this guy over there by the fireplace. He really looks nice. And I didn't have a real boyfriend at that time. So we got to talking and then a few days later, I get a phone call. Would you like to go to the show? He was the floor manager at a hardware store and he was kind of a good looking guy and uh, we gradually got to be dating quite a bit and after about four and a half years I had worked at the Kelowna Courier at that time I was a women's writer and everything that's left over except the sports and uh, I got to thinking oh my god you know is he gonna ask me or isn't he and so it began he was going up to Armstrong with me to see my parents, and they didn't know what to think because here I was suddenly having a, a real boyfriend. And uh, I moved to Calgary. I became the chief copywriter at the Hudson's Bay Company, job I loved. And then within three months, he was in Calgary, and he popped the question. So we, we got married that August. We were having a really good marriage. We had three wonderful children. Charlotte's the oldest, Margaret's the second one, and Richard is the little one. Charlotte is the one who actually suffered through this episode with Russ. So at what age was Russell originally diagnosed with kidney disease? It probably started at the age of 17 when he was diagnosed with nephritis. I found out, although he had told me, I hadn't remembered. Although they thought he was okay, it gradually came back. He began to be not feeling well. I began to worry. And that started to take over his energy. As time went on, he couldn't quite fulfill the job at, at the hardware store. I got more and more worried, and I finally said, I think maybe you should go to a doctor. Usually when people are diagnosed with kidney disease, it comes as a surprise. Did you and Russell know anything about kidney disease before his diagnosis? No, we didn't. We didn't have a hot clue, as I say. So it was a huge learning curve oh. for you and the family over the next series of years as you went on this journey. Yeah. How does the journey go from there? Back in Vancouver, I got a job at CKWX as a copywriter, and uh, it was my habit to uh, phone home in the early afternoon every day just to make sure everything was okay because Russ was there, he wasn't feeling well, and I was worried. So I phoned this afternoon and he couldn't talk to me. He, his, his voice was just not there and he couldn't make a sound. I just hung up the phone and uh, I called my doctor. I told him what was happening and should I go right home or what should I do? And he said to me, just put the phone down, Mrs. Crowley, and go back to work because your husband will be dead in a couple of months. So mm -hmm. I just dropped the phone and I didn't know what to do. And one of my fellow workers came over and said, what happened? I told her she disappeared. And then my boss, who was in, of course, the upper office, called me and said, could you come up and talk? And I went up and I thought, well, okay, what am I supposed to do about that? He's probably going to fire me or something. <laughs> so anyway, he had connections in Vancouver. And he said, first of all, I want you to go straight home. I have no idea if I got on a bus, did somebody take me? I don't know. But I got home and I could see things were not going very well for us. And my boss said to me, can you get your husband to the Vancouver General Hospital in the morning? And of course I said, uh, yes. They took him into the renal unit, which became a new word to me very quickly, or an awful word. And um, there we were. He was in the hospital. I didn't know at that time how serious it could be. There were only two or three beds at the time in the unit. Nobody had heard of a transplant. 
I went over the next day and I put this little thing in here and it was supposed to remove the uh, problem in your blood system. So Russell was on peritoneal dialysis. He was on PD at VGH, is that correct? That's correct. That was the beginning of the treatment. I have a funny story there, but it wasn't funny really. But he was in a single room, so he was reading this book and it turned out to be a very funny book. And he was lying in this bed and he was laughing his head off and all of a sudden this thing, Yes. So a nurse came running and took the book away from him and wouldn't let, wouldn't give it back. She had that. So some things were kind of funny, but I thought, now what do we do? Sounds like he was quite a character. Well, he thought that he could get better. And every every step that went through the treatment at that time, um, he would feel better. 